Are black jeans dominant over white jeans? This question has been at the center of all debates. However, nobody really tried answering it. That's because the answer is embarrassing for white supremacists who don't want to confess that black jeans really are dominant. Yet studies repeatedly reveal that white jeans are weaker than black jeans. But how do we know that it's the case? How can we find whether black jeans remain dominant in all gene expressions? Well, this can be known by simply answering this. What happens when a black man and a white woman have a child? In the same way, what happens when a white man and a black woman have a child together? Well, the child's gene expression clearly leans toward black characters. But in what cases are black genes dominant over white genes to the extent that it's noticeable? Let's know about that in this video. However, you should know that this video is for educational purposes and not to prove that any race is superior to others. We leave this for you to decide. Let's get started. The Black History Archives First, let's talk about the study that has shocked the world. A study conducted by Cornell University has revealed that white Americans have less genetic diversity and a higher occurrence of potentially harmful mutations compared to black Americans. And this has terrified the scientific world. The research analyzed genetic data from 20 individuals of European descent and 15 African Americans, revealing significantly less genetic variation among the former group across 10,000 genes, which aligns with previous expectations. Interestingly, the study also found that Europeans carry a greater number of potentially harmful mutations than Africans. This discovery challenges the assumption that the larger European population size would mitigate differences in genetic variation. While it has long been known that all non-Africans trace their ancestry back to a small group that migrated from the continent tens of thousands of years ago, the study suggests that Europeans underwent a secondary population bottleneck around 30,000 years ago. This secondary reduction in population size further decreased genetic diversity among Europeans allowing harmful mutations to accumulate more readily compared to the genetically diverse African population. This proves that African Americans are better equipped to survive in changing natural conditions compared to white Americans and Europeans. And as the natural selection and survival of the fittest theories suggest, that gene will be selected and expressed that has a better chance of survival, which in this case is the black gene. Now let's take a case. Imagine a black man and a white woman have married. The woman gets pregnant and soon she will deliver a baby. What will that baby look like? Will it be more black or white? Well, to answer, you don't have to know about genes and their complexities. You can easily tell the baby will look more like its father, who is black. In other words, we won't see a baby with 50% traits from its mother and 50% from its father. Rather, we will see a black baby having only a minor difference from its father, showing that one of the parents was not black. Now let's understand the science behind it. First, let's see the skin color. When a white mother with fair skin marries a black man, their child inherits both black and white skin color. However, the gene that is expressed is black, and therefore, we see a black baby. You should know that skin color is determined by multiple genes, a phenomenon known as polygenic inheritance, leading to the diverse range of skin tones observed across different populations. In the case of a child born to such parents, genetic material from both sides contributes to the offspring's traits. Typically, alleles linked to darker skin tones exert dominance over those for lighter skin tones. Therefore, even if the mother transmits alleles for fair skin, the presence of dominant alleles for darker skin from the father can effectively suppress the expression of lighter skin alleles in the child. These alleles responsible for skin color are often variations of genes involved in the production of melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color. Specifically, variations in genes such as MC1R, melanocortin-1 receptor, 
and SLC 24A5, Solute Carrier Family 24 Member 5, play crucial roles in determining skin color. Alleles associated with darker skin tones, such as those found in the MC1R gene, tend to be dominant over alleles for lighter skin tones. Therefore, when a child inherits dominant alleles for darker skin from one parent, they are more likely to exhibit darker skin color, regardless of the presence of alleles for lighter skin from the other parent. Furthermore, the concept of dominance and recessiveness extends beyond individual genes to include the overall genetic makeup of an individual. In this scenario, the alleles for darker skin from the father may wield a stronger influence on the baby's skin color, overshadowing the contribution of alleles for fair skin from the mother. Various factors such as hormonal signals and environmental cues can modulate the genes involved in melanin production, further shaping a baby's skin tone. Through the mechanism of natural selection, Nature tends to favor genetic combinations that grant a survival advantage or adaptability to environmental conditions. In specific environments, darker skin provides protection against harmful UV radiation or gets advantages in thermoregulation, illustrating the evolutionary significance of skin pigmentation. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. Then comes hair color and texture. When a white mother with fair skin marries a black man, their child could inherit not just black skin color, but also hair color and texture resembling those of the black father even though the mother possesses genes for different hair characteristics. This outcome is guided by the dominance of specific alleles and the interaction of genetic factors controlling hair traits. The determination of hair color and texture involves a complex blend of genetic factors with various genes influencing these attributes. For example, genes like MC1R, melanocortin-1 receptor, and TYR, tyrosinase, play crucial roles in determining hair color, while others like EDAR, ectodysplasin A receptor, influence hair texture. In the case of a child born to a white mother and a black father, genetic material from both parents contributes to the child's traits. However, alleles associated with darker hair color and coarser texture, often dominant, are more likely to be expressed in the child, overshadowing the contribution of the mother's alleles for lighter hair color and smooth texture. Specifically, alleles linked to darker hair color, such as those found in the MC1R gene, take precedence over alleles for lighter hair color. Similarly, alleles influencing coarser hair texture, as influenced by the EDAR gene, override alleles for finer hair texture. Even if the mother passes on alleles for lighter hair color or finer texture, the presence of dominant alleles from the black father can override the expression of these traits in the child. Then come facial features. The child inherits facial feature alleles from both parents, yet the expression of these traits tends to favor those of the black father. Facial features, spanning nose shape, eye shape, and jawline are subject to the influence of numerous genetic elements. Genes engaged in craniofacial development, which dictates bone structure, soft tissue morphology, and facial symmetry, hold significant sway over an individual's facial appearance. In the instance of a child born to a white mother and a black father, genetic contributions from both sides shape the offspring's facial traits. Nevertheless, certain alleles associated with facial features wield greater dominance or influence, resulting in a phenotype that more closely resembles one parent over the other. For instance, alleles governing nose shape, represented by genes like DCHS2, Daxus Caterin related to and Runx2 Runt related transcription factor 2 are inherited from both parents. However, if the black father possesses alleles for broader nasal features that prevail over alleles for narrower noses from the mother, the child is likely to exhibit a nose shape like its father. Likewise, alleles influencing eye shape, 
including factors such as eyelid morphology and orbital structure, are passed down from both parents. Genes like PAX3, paired box 3, and FOXC1, forkhead box C1, are pivotal in eye development and can impact traits like eye size and shape. If the black father has dominant alleles for almond-shaped eyes, for instance, the child inherits this trait, even if the mother contributes alleles for rounder eye shapes. However, if we change the father here, then the father won't possess the dominant allele in the first place. Therefore, the reason why black people's genes are dominant is because they always have dominant versions of the alleles that form their own physical body. Additionally, alleles influencing jawline structure, regulated by genes like BMP4, bone morphogenetic protein 4, and FGFR1, fibroblast growth factor receptor 1, also contribute to determining facial appearance. If the father carries dominant alleles for a more pronounced jawline that overshadow alleles for a softer jawline from the mother, the child inherits a jawline resembling the father's. Then, we have the baby's heightened body traits. In the case of a child born to a white mother and a black father, genetic contributions from both parents contribute to determining the child's height and body traits. However, Certain alleles associated with heightened body composition may exert greater dominance or influence, resulting in a phenotype that more closely resembles one parent over the other, which in this case will be the black father who carried dominant genes. For example, alleles affecting height, such as those found within genes like HMGA2, high mobility group AT hook 2, and GDF5, growth differentiation factor 5, are inherited from both parents. If the black father carries alleles associated with taller stature that dominate over alleles for shorter stature from the mother, the child is likely to exhibit a height, more like its father. Similarly, alleles influencing body composition, including those governing muscle mass, fat distribution, and bone density, are passed down from both parents. Genes like ACTN3, alpha-actinin-3, and FTO, fat mass and obesity-associated protein, contribute to shaping body composition traits. However, as the black father possesses dominant alleles for greater muscle mass and bone density, the child inherits these traits, even if the mother contributes alleles for different body characteristics. What do you think? Are black genes and DNA really dominant over white genes and DNA? Isn't it true that the scientific world has been intentionally limited so studies cannot be conducted that reveal black genes are always dominant? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on black gene dominance and whether you have seen cases where black genes express themselves, masking white genes in an individual. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.